What you'll be covering in this drill is learning about the background and setting for skid steer loaders. This is the Yellow Metal Bootcamp video for drill number SS101, Skid Steer Loader Orientation. To begin this drill, you should be enrolled in Level 1 classes. This drill is a basic Level 1 exercise which is required for NAHET certification. What you'll be covering in this drill is learning about the background and setting for skid steer loaders. This is important because this will give you an appreciation for them and their place in the industry so that you can see why it is chosen to work on specific jobs and do different tasks as opposed to other machines. But before we begin, let's talk about safety. Remember, safety first. Taking a shortcut might save a minute, but it could end up costing you a lifetime. Skid steer loaders may be small, but they're not to be confused with a lawn tractor, and they're definitely not a toy. Many of them weigh as much as a car, and they're designed to have the same power delivery a lot of other heavy equipment does. Many people are killed as they operate them, perhaps unaware of the danger involved. Training is really necessary in order to operate them safely. And make sure to read through the owner's manual and leave it in the machine. It's also important not to remove or paint over warning and informational decals on the machine. Skid steer loaders are relatively simple machines. On the front, you typically have a bucket that comes standard with most machines, and the bucket has a cutting edge, and its rotation is powered by hydraulic rams. The bucket is connected to the lifting arms by a set of pins that allows it to rotate. The machine is built on either wheels or tracks. If it has tracks, they usually call this machine a compact track loader or a multi-terrain loader. Around the back, you have an engine compartment, and there is a place for attaching a counterweight to help balance the load in the front. The machine has a roll of a protective structure, or called ROPS, that is usually constructed out of a rigid frame covered with a metal roof and window grid for the safety of the operator. Most newer models have a safety lockout system that shuts down the hydraulics if the machine detects that the operator is not in the seat due to the danger this machine has due to being in such close proximity to the hydraulic lift arms and work tools. The machine is typically controlled by joysticks or hand and foot controls depending on the manufacturer. And they usually have both a hand throttle and a foot throttle. Skid steer loaders can turn in their own tracks which makes them extremely maneuverable and valuable for applications that require a compact, agile loader. Unlike in a conventional front loader, the lift arms in these machines lie alongside the driver with the major pivot points behind the driver's shoulders. Because of the operator's proximity to moving booms and buckets, early skid steer loaders were not as safe as the conventional front loaders, particularly during entry and exit of the operator. Modern skid loaders have a fully enclosed cab and other safety features to protect the operator from injury. The very first type of skid steer loader actually had three wheels, two in the front and one that was like a caster in the back. It was invented by the brothers Cyril and Lewis Keller in their blacksmith shop located in Rothsay, Minnesota in 1957. The Kellers built the small loader to help a nearby farmer, Eddie Vello, mechanize the process of cleaning his two-story pole barn. The light, compact machine with its rear caster wheel was able to turn around within its own length while performing a lot of the same tasks as a conventional front-end loader. The Melro Brothers, whose Melro Manufacturing Company was down the road in Gwinner, North Dakota, purchased the rights to the Keller loader in 1958 and hired the Kellers to continue refining their invention. Just two years later, they replaced the caster wheel with a rear axle and introduced the M400, the first four-wheel skid steer loader. The Bobcat name was added in 1962 to describe the key attributes of the machine, tough, agile, and quick. The term Bobcat is sometimes used as a generic term for skid steer loaders. In the years since, skid steers have experienced quite a few changes, including the development of a hydrostatic drive system, rollover protective cab structures, radius and vertical path lift arm configurations, deluxe instrumentation, and some now have heating and air conditioning. Today, in addition to rubber tire skid steer loaders, there are all-wheel steer loaders and compact track loaders. Compact track loaders feature a rubber track undercarriage that can provide better traction for digging and pushing, and compact track loaders provide less ground disturbance and feature better flotation in soft, wet, muddy, and sandy conditions. A skid loader can sometimes be used in place of a large excavator by digging a hole from the inside. The skid steer first digs a ramp leading to the edge of the desired excavation. It then uses the ramp to carry material out of the hole. The skid loader reshapes the ramp making it steeper and longer 
as the excavation deepens. This method is particularly useful for digging under a structure where overhead clearances do not allow for the boom of a large excavator, such as when digging a basement under an existing house. The conventional bucket of many skid loaders can be replaced with a variety of specialized buckets or attachments, many powered by the loader's hydraulic system. The ability to slip through narrow spaces sometimes no wider than three feet, and to be able to get under overhead obstacles as low as about seven feet, along with the ability to maneuver quickly and easily in confined areas, are key advantages of these compact machines. In these kinds of situations, they can do the job much faster, easier, and more profitably than hand crews, while often outworking and out-earning larger machinery due to their efficiency. This is becoming an even more important factor as the size of new residential construction sites decrease and redevelopment activity in crowded urban areas increases. Transporting these machines is a lot less tedious and a lot less expensive than moving bigger pieces around from job to job too, requiring a much smaller investment in towing vehicles and trailers. A smaller package also means a smaller price tag compared to larger pieces of machinery, which is attractive particularly when starting a business. As you can see, all of these attributes contribute to the single biggest advantage of skid steers, their incredible versatility. Well, that's it. Make sure to have your instructor verify your basic competency and the completion of this drill to earn applicable credit. Remember, they may have a different way for you to accomplish this drill or may demonstrate methods that differ from those that might be shown or explained here, and they have the final say in how to perform each drill and the authority to determine whether or not they've been completed acceptably. Good job! Now you have a better understanding of the background of skid steer loaders, their setting, and what sets them apart from other pieces of heavy equipment.